Oh, dude, look at the put my logo on there. You bet. <laughs> <laughs> What's up guys? I am uh, excited. We have a fun project for today and probably tomorrow and it's the first project that we're actually doing in the hangar. So it's like I'm shifting gears from building the hangar to actually using it. And something you guys might not know about me is that I've been into 3D printing for a long time. I got my first 3D printer back in 2012 and I used to 3D print stuff for my drone company. And then I got out of it for a bit. Recently, my brother bought me a new 3D printer uh, last Christmas, and I've been using it for little things. Basically, like this uh, light on the side of my hanger is on a circular can, but it's got a square base to the light. So I just build little like fairings or spacers to fit there. So I use it a lot, but one thing I've never used it on is my plane. And uh, recently, the guys over at Diamondback Nozzles reached out and asked if I'd be interested in doing some stuff for the plane. So. I've got Scott, Rod, as well as Harris here from Diamondback Nozzles. And you guys make diamond, is it infused or just straight up diamond nozzles for 3D printers? These are, these are solid diamond tipped nozzles that we make on these big presses. These are nine foot tall presses, over a million PSI. So we're making a solid chunk of diamond and then we're machining it down to a nozzle tip that we put into the nozzle body for all the different types of printers out there so that people have the best nozzle in the industry. It's not gonna wear out, you can print any filament. Uh, we had some technology breakthroughs that allows us to put a dime, shape a diamond in a way that gets it into a, di a 3D printer. We're, we're ex super excited to be out here with you to connect to, to airplanes and, and other industries where we can print stuff. And so I have a much lower end printer than what you guys brought out. They brought out the, the big boys. So I'm excited to see what we can do. Basically, we have a couple plans. There's a few things that I've wanted to change on the plane that I know we can fix with a 3D print. Also, some friends of mine out from your guys' neck of the woods out in Salt Lake City, the Dickersons, Corey and Dustin, designed some fairings for the shocks on their kit foxes, as well as like the Cabane V and a couple little parts. And I think they were able to print a couple miles per hour of cruise speed. So that's kind of the goal. We went up and flew this morning, got a baseline. We're kind of seeing 102 miles an hour true. So yep. let's see if we can make it at least 103. So that's oh, we the, gotta go more than that. <laughs> no. It's a pretty draggy plane. I hit a drag bucket at 100 no matter what, so I would be impressed if we get anything out of it, but either way, it's gonna be a fun challenge. Yeah. The first one, the big one, my parking brake, since I switched to the Behringer wheels, um, it doesn't have enough friction in the brake lever to stay on. And I've actually had it in flight slowly move to the, or sorry, stay off, had it move to the on position, I land, hit the brakes, and then the brakes are stuck on. Luckily, I had a lot of weight in the baggage, so I didn't go on my nose, but yeah. it rattled me. So what I've got right now is just zip ties holding it forward. So I wanna see if we can come up with some sort of latch or some sort of safety that holds it in the off position. So awesome. yeah, stick your head in this side, I'll show you. Okay, so right in, that's my parking brake. And so in the forward positions, in the off position, like go, when I bring it back, that's in the, the on, the on position like stop. So I want to find some way that, to just make something, whether it goes underneath the center console we can take off this plate, or something that goes on the top that helps us hold it. I wonder if you get something that clips into this hole and then blocks the slot, like goes into the slot and kind of, so when you do want to actuate, you just pop that off, pull it up, then you can pull back. Yeah, I like that. Ooh, it, I like this that little hole here, then it, it just blocks the hole so it can't physically come back. Let's do that. And then here's the other thing. You notice my little, Headset hanger, which is just a, uh, what, a headphone hanger off Amazon. When I have my camera in here, it's pretty hard to get the headsets on there and they always bounce off or we end up moving the camera. So I thought it'd be cool if we could build a headset hanger that integrates a mount for an action camera. So, so it hangs from here down? Yeah, maybe we spread it a little wider for the headset holders and then the camera mount could stick off the front. And then lastly, I get a crazy amount of like flap behind these landing lights because of them not having a fairing. Yeah. I don't know how we could make a fairing for those, but that would be a cool thing to streamline because I can physically see this bounce up and down in flight. Yeah. yeah, I think that'd be one to scan. That'd be a good one to scan and then you'd get references that you could model from. Because yeah. you guys brought a scanner? Yeah, I got a yeah. 3D scanner. I've never even like, I know of scanners. I've seen people do it maybe like on online, but I've never seen it used like practically in real life. Hello. 
works perfect. Yeah. Okay, so these fairings are made for the little strut for the tail. So this just streamlines the tail. And then if I like how they work, I will get the right color blue. But for right now, they're out of the uh, carbon fiber infused pet G. You know what idea I just came up with, Scott? I have these little cuffs or fairings that go between the windshield and the wing on my plane. I'll show you these. That very chintzy looking aluminum piece that I built years ago, that is not very nice and I have it like taped on right now. I don't know if you can see. Oh yeah. If you guys have a 3D scanner, then maybe we could scan that and we could 3D print. I think we could scan that. That would be a great uh, project to try with the 3D printers we have. What what that would be a fun project. But yeah, so oh, yeah. this is where the spar meets the spar carry through tube, and this is all just where it lets air and water in. So if we can, let yeah. me put some tape on this, yeah, to scan it, and then we'll uh, we'll throw it in the mop, the, the uh, CAD system, and see what we can get. I like it. We're putting tape on them. What are these? These are little reflective locator tabs that the scanner will use just to improve the accuracy of the, of the scan. I mean, we could scan it as is, but this will just improve that accuracy that we get. Yeah, so yeah, be able to import this model in, use this plane, and then generate generate a model that we can then go and 3D print. Is it getting all the way back? Yeah. Yeah. And that seal's pretty dang nice. Do that way. That's that one? Yeah, it's this way. Yeah, that is. Wow. I mean, that is like a perfect fit. <laughs> Will the door still open though? Or is it too thick? Oh yeah. Oh no, they open. I mean, but that fit is just scanning that made that a perfect fit. All right, it's been a day and a half of 3D printing. We made a ton of parts for this thing. Some of them were fairings that the Dickersons already had designed that we put on the landing gear. And then uh, we also designed some custom fairings for the lights. We built some wing root fairings that mesh to the windshield, which we're actually already redesigning to make thinner and add a VG, which would be awesome. But I'm at the point where I'm ready for a test flight. Now, I did talk to the FISDO, and if you're someone that does something like this, make sure you check your operating or airworthiness limitations and make sure you're not gonna be doing something that would constitute a major modification, which would require a phase one fly off. Now, I did briefly talk with an inspector, sent them an email, uh, they agreed with me that this doesn't constitute a major modification based on my airworthiness limitations. You know, I'm gonna go do a, a solo test flight, see what the speeds are. I guess we'll find out. Hopefully something comes of this speed-wise. Yeah. yeah they we'll couldn't get... hurt. That's what we're at, right? No, it can't hurt. So we, uh, we got everything secured properly. Let's, uh, let's go test this thing. Okay, 
so last time we went up to 7,500 feet pressure altitude, so I'm at my altimeter set at 2992. Then I'll set the fuel burn at five and a half gallons per hour, which put, should put me at the same manifold pressure or similar. But I'm gonna go off fuel burn because that's what I set my cruise speed on normally. Yeah, it's sitting at 106, 107 at five and a half on a lower manifold pressure. Very, very interesting. So there is also the fact that I don't have Scott in here, so I'm lighter, so it may go faster. So there's gonna be, I'm gonna have to do more tests, but my immediate gut reaction is it, it does feel like it's flying a little faster and it would make sense because it's cleaning up some of the flat faces that are facing perfectly into the wind. Behind the, the lights, that that hair is cleaned up a bit because I'm not seeing as much flutter on the underside of the wing or in the, in the fabric. I don't know. <laughs> Again, I wish it was smoother air, and I wish I had Scott in here. Unfortunately, they have to leave, and I don't think it's gonna get smoother today. It's rough up there. Is it? Oh, yeah. so it's hard to get a speed. Yeah, but it was bouncing between 104 and 107. Constantly sitting at like 105, 106, so that's, three miles an hour, three, four miles an hour. It definitely felt faster, but again, rough air, it's so hard to tell, but it never dropped down to where we were seeing before, because we were constantly seeing pretty much 102, remember? But it was going like below 100, up to 104. That was kind of our range last time. This time was sitting 104 to like 108, with the most of it being like 105 to 107. So it's faster. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. That is more than I expected, honestly. I thought it would be like maybe, but yeah, the more I think about it, if it was smooth air, the, thing, the, it'll, the plane will be able to hold a constant speed better. All right, I don't know about you guys, but I consider that a success. You know, with the slow, draggy plane, just fixing little parts, I didn't know if it would make a difference, but I'm telling you, I need to do more tests, but I never saw my true airspeed sit at or below what it was doing the whole time before, so. To me, that tells me we're going faster. What I'm gonna try to do, I'll try to upload all these files if you guys are cool with it, and I'll put a link below so any of you that 3D print, you can make some for your own. And then also, if you do 3D print and you have a 3D printer, definitely check out Diamondback Nozzles. These things, I will tell you, before I had this awesome printer, they did make my other printer print more reliably and it felt like I could print faster and have more consistency, right? So really quickly, I mean, just to remind everyone, what what is the benefit of the diamond nozzles and what printers do you guys support? Well, first, just thanks for letting us come out and play with airplanes and parts and, and it was really a fun time to, to, to experiment with some of this stuff. Harris, you wanna talk about all the nozzles we've got and what, what the benefit is? Yeah, you bet. I mean, diamond, diamond is at the tip of the nozzle. That's where all the work's being done with the, these particular nozzles. We designed it so the reduction of the film, it's all within the diamond. We've talked about thermal conductivity, so we're gonna maintain temperature at the tip where the work's happening. Uh, we're gonna have less clogging, less propensity of clogging because that tip will stay at temperature. It won't drop as, you know, as filaments pulling energy out of the system. Um, so just consistency of print. Don't have to worry about it. One less thing to worry about on your printer. You just make parts, focus on making parts rather than keeping that printer running. So we, we support uh, V6 compatible, Volcano compatible, MK8, um, Anchor Make Now, and others are coming out. We're gonna keep releasing as we, we keep going here. And I will tell you again, I've been 3D printing for a long time and this was enlightening to me that there is a way that isn't just a constant headache and nightmare. And your guys' nozzle, nozzle on my other printer made it so much easier, but then getting to experience this thing, it's just like, I have never seen a, a print happen so fast and so clean, so consistently and I know the nozzle's part of that. So thank you guys for reigniting my passion with 3D printing. And this is not the last that we're gonna do with this. We already have some ideas. You guys 3D scanned. Yeah, we got some more scans. A couple parts of the plane. So it's just gonna get better from here. So uh, I'm gonna let you guys get on the road. They got a long drive ahead of them. Thank you again for coming out. Oh, thank and uh, thank you guys for sticking around. You know the drill. Like this video if you do. Subscribe if you haven't. Come be my wingman. See you on the next one. Peace. The street cred comes from a small town road off Cedar Street. It's all pines grow in a man. Now I know what I, I become. No, I mean.